So if we're looking at topic three, which is thermal physics, we've only got three little equations, so they're actually pretty easy to get through. The first one is P equals F over A. Now let's maybe define it. So P, that is a pressure. Now it's unfortunate in this uh, field in physics that we have a lot of different things that are represented by P. Just like before, we saw that P was a momentum. But P, capital P, was also power. And in this case, P is also pressure. Now the pressure can be written in lots of different things, but the most common one is a Pascal. You can make it uh, Pascals, you can make it atmospheres or millimeters of mercury, but that's the most common one. Now this F, that's still a force. Okay, so that's, that's this one here. F equals the force, which is measured in Newtons. And A, in this case, is the area. So that's measured in meters squared. So what this tells you then is the pressure is equal to the force divided by the area. And this is something that explains very well why you don't want to sit on only one nail. You know, if you see like a bed of nails, that's fine. You can sit on a whole bunch of nails, but you don't want to sit on just one nail. And the reason is because your force that you have to you know, put on that, so in other words, your weight, that's just going to be your mass times the acceleration due to gravity. And if you're only sitting on one nail, there's a very small surface area. So that means then a large number divided by a small number gives you a very, very large pressure. So that's why this would sort of pierce through you and you probably don't want to sit on that. But if you have a whole bunch of nails, let's say you have hundreds of them, well then your same force is being spread out over a very large area. Well, much more compared to just one nail. So because of that, this becomes a larger number and a big number divided by a, a, you know, a pretty big number, well, that lowers the pressure. So this pressure will be smaller. So that explains that one. Now, um, this one right here, this Q equals MC delta T, this one is for specific heat capacity. That's what we're working with here. And by the way, that's going to be C. So C in this case is going to be the specific heat capacity. We've got Q. Q is going to be the heat, in other words, the energy. So that's going to be measured in joules. M is still the mass. That's usually in kilograms, but you'll sometimes see it in grams or other things. And delta T is a change in temperature. And in the IB, we use the uh, SI units, so those are well, I at least learned it. It was uh, in French, Système International. So that's like the international system of using things. So we measure things in either degrees Kelvin or you can use degrees Celsius. We don't use Fahrenheit. It's only the U.S. pretty much and a few other places that use Fahrenheit. The rest of the world uses Kelvin or degrees Celsius. So let's look at the units for this then. If we wanted specific heat capacity, the units would be, well, try in your head to get C by itself. That means you'd have to take Q and divide it by M, and you'd have to divide it by delta T. So because of that, the units would be joules, because those are Q, and we'd have per kilogram per degree Kelvin. So this could be the units of specific heat capacity. So that's what we deal with with those. Now what if, though, we have something else? So maybe I'll just draw it with a different color here. So this one, that is all about, uh, well, let's see, L. That's the specific latent heat. And what you do with this, this is all about a phase change. And this will be measured in joules per kilogram because you can see this Q over M, that would be L. So specific latent heat, this has to do with phase changes. That's what the main thing going on here with this is. So if you have a phase change, if you have something changing from liquid to... I don't know, gas or a liquid to a solid. So we call these things fusion or vaporization. Well, then you have to include one of these terms. So this is how you deal with these SL topics of, uh, well, with thermophysics. There's only three equations. But, and actually, it's a pretty short topic. That's the good news is there's a few key things to remember and to make sure you know before going into your exam. And the pressure one doesn't come up very often, but the Q equals MC delta T comes up pretty often, as well as the Q equals ML. 
So this right here is what we can do. Now keep in mind what these help you with. These are useful if uh, you get an example like, I don't know, uh, water is poured into a cup. And the water has a specific heat capacity of blah blah blah. And the cup is made of metal and it has a different specific heat capacity of blah blah blah. You know, they'll tell you these things. Then they might say, um, if the water initially has this temperature, what's going to be the equilibrium temperature of both of them? So what you do then is you would use uh, this Q equals MC delta T to help you out, to figure out what the temperature would be. Now if you have in that situation, if you have that there's something is changing phase, so maybe, I don't know, maybe you put some ice cubes in some water. You say, ooh, and then you heat it up. Well, during that time, you're going to have some energy being used in order to change the phase. So you have to add an extra Q term in these. So that's how you use these different terms here. And that's what we do with thermal physics.